I'm Ralph Galati. Uh, I've been a, an advisor to the J Dog brands uh, for about seven or eight years, and I am currently the executive director of the J Dog Foundation. Uh, so I am right toward the end of the Vietnam War. I was at St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia from 66 to 70, and they had uh, an Air Force ROTC program there, and that was one of my motivations to go to St. Joe's. So my last two years at St. Joe's, I was at Air Force ROTC, uh, which was really a great opportunity for me. The day I graduated, I also was commissioned second lieutenant in the Air Force, and I went right to flight school. And then uh, less than two years later, I was in Southeast Asia. So my motivation really was at the end of the war was an opportunity, obviously, to serve. Uh, so my total active duty time was eight years, 1970 to 78. They were really, uh, really extraordinary years. I enjoyed my time in the Air Force. Uh, 1970 and 71, I was in flight training. Uh, I got trained eventually in the F-4 Phantom, which was a two-seat fighter. And then in October of 71, was assigned to uh, Ubon Royal Thai Air Force Base in Thailand. Uh, which is where a lot of the flight missions were coming out of. Uh, and I served there from October, end of October, until February 16th, 1972, when we were flying a mission, my pilot and I, over North Vietnam. Uh, we were hit by a surface-to-air missile. Uh, we had to eject from our aircraft. Uh, fortunately, we ejected safely. Uh, unfortunately, we ended up uh, landing in a village. And uh, so we were immediately captured. Um, the village people were uh, not particularly fond to see us because it was during their big holiday season called Tet. Uh, so we were bombing the area and um, so as we were floating down our parachutes, we didn't have much time to evade obviously and uh, the hundred or so village people that were there uh, had every intention of killing us that day. And we were, the only reason we were brought to safety was we think a local militia guy uh, saw us and had enough uh, savvy to say that uh, if I get these guys to Hanoi, I'll probably uh, get a promotion or a reward. So we were in the southernmost portion of uh, North Vietnam, so we had to get trekked from there up to Hanoi. So I spent the next uh, 14 months in Hanoi, some of it in solitary confinement, and then as more POWs were shot down and captured, uh, we had some roommates. Uh, but spent most of my time in the Hanoi Hilton, and then was finally released on the 28th of March, 1973, so I was the last, next to the last group of returnees. Um, and we all uh, left uh, Hanoi and went to Clark Air Base in the Philippines, which was the staging area for uh, uh, medical evaluations, uh, physical exams, mental exams, fresh showers, fresh food, uh, clean uniforms, call your family and kind of get ready for the trek back to the United States. The, um, we were suspect up until the very last minute when they took us out of our prison cells and put civilian clothes on us, we figured it was just another propaganda attempt. Uh, when we finally made it to the airport, which was called Gialong, it was the Hanoi airport, and we saw a large crowd there and what looked like a couple of military officers, American military officers in uniform, uh, we were kind of optimistic. And then a C-141 cargo aircraft landed with a big red cross on its tail and since nobody shot at it, we thought that was a good sign. So uh, they announced our names individually. We were repatriated. We were walked across the tarmac into the aircraft and 40 or 50 of us at a time. And, uh, and then we took off. And once we got out over the Pacific Ocean, we were relieved because we hadn't been shot down. So we were really kind of nervous at the time. Uh, but a few hours later, we were at Clark Air Base in the Philippines. Uh, for the first time, we got to call our families. Uh, you know, and have a hot shower and a nice, nice meal. Uh, and most of us stayed there, I think it was three or four days, just to get readjusted. And then they individually flew us uh, in groups, you know, back in, into, uh, back to our home. My home base ended up being uh, Andrews Air Force Base in Washington, D.C. Uh, spent a few days there uh, with some medical evaluations and then the next 90 days at home with your family on convalescent leave and then back on active duty again for the next five years. So. It was kind of a whirlwind. Uh, the interesting thing that I like to bring up is there were almost 3 million soldiers that fought in Vietnam. Uh, 58,000 died and several hundred thousand were injured. None of them were welcomed home. So in the 60s and 70s, veteran, Vietnam veterans were toxic. Uh, of the 591 of us that were released out of Hanoi, we were welcomed home. So it was really pleasurable but uncomfortable for us to be singled out. 
but nonetheless, uh, I try to represent Vietnam veterans as best I can uh, because they really were fighting difficult battles on the ground while we were in captivity. And one of our motivations was uh, to do our best to do the code of conduct and to be a resistor as best we could so as not to um, do a disservice to the folks that were fighting battles every day on the ground. So it was great. It was great and rewarding to be home. Well, I want to thank Jerry and Tracy Flanagan, uh, the owners and creators and founders of J-Dog. Uh, they spun off uh, the J-Dog Foundation with the opportunity and the hope of just being able to help veterans. So our mission right now is really to be a clearinghouse or an opportunity or a place where a veteran or a family member or a military member or a military spouse could call us with the hope that we could help connect them to the right benefits or service. So uh, right now, we are kind of majoring on um, uh, suicide prevention issues and PTSD support. We are not clinicians or medical professionals. Our job is screen them a little bit and point them to the right benefit or service, whether it's with the VA or civilian organizations that are really motivated to help veterans. We're doing some work in the education space with some grants. Uh, we can even answer questions about basic benefits, whether it's with the VA or somewhere else. So our, our hope is that through our franchisees and visibility, uh, get the word out that the J-Dog Foundation is here to help veterans and their families, regardless of what you need. And if you're struggling with a place to go and you don't know who to call, you call us and we'll be glad to put you to the right resource.